Hello there. I'm Jimmy Vegas, and believe it or not, no object in this scene right now is moving from its original position. It's a cool little effect that we're going to recreate in this video, which will help you in your game. This tutorial is sponsored by John John Games. So, if you guys are looking for a channel with plenty of content, gaming, and creativity, John Channel is the place to go. You should probably check out some of his socials too and stay up to date with all his latest content. Loads of stuff to see. You can find all kinds of games on there, some Grand Theft Auto stuff, even a couple of tutorials that even I haven't covered. If you fancy being sponsored in one of these tutorials, just like John John Games, all you need to do is click that join button below and become a sponsor. Now, on with the tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the effect that is used here to recreate that kind of scrolling infinite look um, is just simply using the offset values for the material. Now, I did a tutorial quite a few years ago on this effect, but I've always been asked, well, what is it useful for? The great thing about this is you can infinitely create a running style just like this by using so little resources. If you had this as an actual object that was moving and you infinitely generated more objects, that would use up more resources. And as we can see, all that's actually happening is it is just scrolling. So at the moment, it's scrolling one way. So it looks like this guy, Timmy, which you might recognize from a game I released in 2020 called Timmy and Mousy. Um, but essentially, all it is, is a script. And we are setting the offset of the X and the offset of the Y, just in case you want to move it in a different way. And we are multiplying it by the current time frame. And then we can decide here just how fast or how slow that occurs. So you would set the X value for the offset and the Y value for the offset. You would then get the component for renderer, the material, and then you would use the main texture offset right here and you create a new vector too. And then you would modify all of this and that all goes inside the update method. So to put this into a bit more practice, we can actually make the scroll speed faster or slower. So if we were to put this as negative four and save, the ground would then be scrolling much faster, but it wouldn't quite look as genuine as it did when we first started this video. The reason being is because the faster you scroll it, the stranger it can look. I mean, at the moment, yeah, that looks okay. To be honest, that might look even better. But again, it's up to you. So if you wanted to further modify this, you would need to be careful because if we put that as a plus four, so just four F, F because it's a float, then it would go in reverse. So this is going to look a little bit strange now. See what I mean? So you have to be careful. So another example of all of this that I have is another scene. So if we go into this scene, and at the moment, Timmy is just floating. But with a little bit of extra code or modification of that code, we can make Timmy look like he's actually falling. So let's go to our code right here and let's set the offset to zero because we want the scrolling to occur vertically, not horizontally in this case. And let's put this as two. So we are going to scroll on the Y. Now let's save, head back into Unity. And we just need to apply that script to each object that you would want to scroll. So I actually have four duplicates of a cube here, which just has that little cloud texture on it. So I just have to make sure that this script does indeed go onto each of those objects. Nice and easily. So now if I press play, you will see the scrolling occur, but it's in the opposite direction. So currently it looks like Timmy is floating upwards. Now, this is a classic example of something that can go wrong with this technique. And it is a little bit distracting with the shadow right there. So I am actually going to turn the shadow off um, just because, like I say, it looks a bit weird. So anyway, going back to the script, 
you can see here that we have set the offset to y as 2 and it does indeed scroll you just have to be mindful that it may need to be a negative depending on which way you want to scroll it and you can actually set both x and y which we will do in uh, just a second uh, but for now as long as we have that as a negative it will create that effect of timmy falling through the sky and that's kind of cool so again it comes back to all that is there's no extra objects there it is literally just a scrolling material going over and over and it can create that effect it's it's genius in some ways because the amount of resources it can save is astronomical because to create that scene genuinely you would either need a massive object and some gravity involved or you would need to constantly duplicate the object below and remove the old object so creating it this way is much more efficient now obviously you can't create a whole game doing that well you might be able to create a whole game doing this but generally this kind of thing is mainly for little like cut scenes or anything like that but you know i wouldn't put it past the realms of trying to get a whole game out of just scrolling so anyway to show you that you can indeed have it on the x and y i now have set the x as negative one the y as negative two and it will scroll towards the corner slightly so let's press play there we go and obviously depending on what the values are you can change which way the direction occurs so if we change that to a one you'll say see the way timmy is falling the direction will change there we go so that looks a little bit more realistic now and what i like most about this is it's, it's just genius it creates an amazing effect that i really can't describe how cool and easy it is just with three lines of code so what i will do is i will actually place this code in the pinned comment for this video so if you want to use it you can the last thing i want to mention on this is you should really try and use a seamless texture if you don't use a seamless texture it will look unnatural and uneven and what i mean by seamless is the fact that this texture can flow on to it constantly without having a weird you know line or weird jump in between so if you want to uh, head to google or something and look for a seamless texture you'll be able to use seamless textures to try this method out and as i said i think it's absolute genius because this kind of thing is is so simple but a lot of people would assume that it's incredibly difficult so yeah like i say i'll leave um in fact let me undo the changes we've made there i will put it back to its original and I will leave this code as it stands right now in the pinned comment if you want to use it. So I hope that helps you in a lot of ways and you can create a cool effect with your fixed camera. And hopefully I'll see you around in another tutorial. Thanks very much for watching, guys.